I'm Sean Dealey uh, here at Sweetwater Studio, Studio B, our Atmos mix room. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Animals as Leaders track Red Miso off Parisia that was released in Atmos in January 2023. Uh, we mix it here in Studio B with Javier and Nick Morzov. So uh, I'm going to take you guys through our Atmos mix session uh, mixed here on our PMC uh, Atmos rig. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. There's some cool stuff in here. Um, I guess we'll start off. Uh, I'll tell you about the process of getting it into Atmos. Uh, we worked closely with the stereo mix files. So I actually had uh, Nick bring his Pro Tools rig. So we worked together. He was in the tracking room here, uh, bouncing me stems. So we got stereo stems for all of the elements of the mix. So uh, broken down, uh, I have kicks, snare, toms, uh, hi-hat ride, spot cymbal mics, overheads, and rooms. On this specific track, there's not much for rooms, pretty low level, um, but uh, that's how the drums are broken out. And so we'll go through those and I'll show you a little bit of processing. The real goal that I tried to end up with here was uh, maintaining translation to the down mix for uh, matching the stereo mix and the balance and all that. So most of the stuff that comes to me is at the same level as it was at in the stereo mix. Uh, if we switch over to my mix window, most of the faders are at zero, so we are rematching the same balance that was in the original mix. Um, that being said, I'll go through some of the other stuff. Uh, now, there's not uh, technically a bass player in the band, but there is a uh, bass guitar on all the recordings on this record. So we have a stereo bass stem. We then get into guitars. Uh, there's some heavy rhythms, uh, intro effects. So the one thing that I found was really... Uh, a cool thing to do is there was so much um, intricate effects that were created for the record that we were able to sort of spread out. So we printed uh, dry guitars and affected guitars separately. So I have what is effectively a dry guitar and then the effects separate. So we were able to turn those into uh, stereo objects and stretch them out along the sidewalls of the mix. So I'm gonna get into a little bit more here. I'll show you some of the panning on that. Uh, they have the hate rhythms, which are some super heavy guitar parts, uh, really aggressive sounding. Uh, palm mutes, thump guitars, which are some of the eight string stuff with thumbs. Uh, we get into some of the solo stuff where there's effects and extra parts to that, harmonized parts on those guitars. So really all the elements of the record, we've had uh, Nick print those and sort of break them out. There's a little bit of keyboard stuff, some piano, some arps. There's some, uh, you know, arpeggiated different components to this where we got into using some of the Dolby Atmos panner. Uh, and I'll show you how we did that. But so uh, some synth pads and things like that. And that kind of wraps up the audio uh, component of what I got from the original stereo mix. So I think we're looking at roughly uh, 30, 34 uh, stereo audio tracks. So that's what we built our mix with. So uh, I'm going to hit play here just so we get an idea of what we're working with. <clears throat> so this intro guitar is a clean component to it. Then there is all the delay trails and reverbs. So uh, we're able to pan those out in different component, different places in our mix. So uh, the other thing I should mention is for the majority of the work I'm doing, uh, each track is getting its own stereo object. So working from the kick drum down, uh, everything is living in an object. Uh, some of my effects, I have a few 7-1 reverbs uh, that are going to the bed. I have an LFE aux that is uh, low pass to... Well, 77.778 hertz, but uh, effectively getting rid of any of the frequencies that I don't want to go to the LFE. Also have that turned down a bit, not relying heavily on the LFE, but uh, sending uh, information from the kick, toms, and bass. So uh, going back to those guitars to check out the placement on those. So we're listening to the clean one. So that's 50% off the front wall. When we look at the next one, the effects are actually lifted and pushed into the back of the mix. 
So that component goes to the back, the clean part stays in the front. So it really creates a cool sort of dynamic between the two parts of that. So uh, that's kind of how I played with this mix to get it to sort of open up and make these guitar parts that lived in the stereo mix sort of become uh, larger than life and really kind of use the space within the Atmos mix to make them sound super cool. Um, I'll go back to the drums once they kick in. Uh, looking at some of the components, the kick drum and the bass guitar, uh, as far as the way that I'm working here, uh, anything with low frequency information is living on the front wall, so staying in the left and right. So the kick drum, the bass guitar, uh, and uh, things that are being sent to the LFE, I want to keep them up there so they're in phase with uh, anything that gets sent to the sub. So I'm going to kind of pull these pieces up. Uh, kick drum. Snare drum, so we're looking at the panning on the kick drum. It's straight up, left and right in the front. The snare drum I pulled back to 50% on the front wall here, so it's living sort of in the wide speakers. It makes it sort of live outside of stereo and uh, wider than stereo. When we're listening on devices like Apple AirPod Maxes, uh, that'll give us like a peripheral vision, so outside of stereo, so wider than stereo. And so that's kind of how I want to try and create things that get outside of the left and right. So uh, pulling those together, I'll throw the overheads in so we get like a kick snare overhead thing going on. Same thing, I have those lifted up and at the same place at 50% off the front wall. They're up 25% in the height, so I have a little bit of lift on the overheads. The hi-hats uh, are also on their own, so I have them stacked where the same overhead channel is. Spot mics with sort of the splashes and things. It's a little bit higher. Same spot, it's uh, about 40% on the height, so kind of living the drums in the front part of this mix. Toms, we'll go to the section with some toms here. They're just a little bit, I got 75%, so they're 25% off that wall, so we have a little bit of spread. There's not a ton of like sub bass in them, so I'm not super concerned about the interaction with the LFE channel. And then I'll just uh, unmute or unsolo these and listen to the rooms. So they're fairly quiet. But we'll turn them up just a bit here so we can hear. And that's living in the back. So when we have the whole drum kit together, Having listened to those, and so uh, I'm, you're not going to be able to hear this in Atmos over this video, but if you listen in uh, spatial audio on Apple or Tidal, uh, you'll get an idea how these drums sound, so how they're spaced outside of left and right. So uh, going from there, we have the bass guitar, which uh, sounds super great. They did a great job of getting a super aggressive sound. changes along the song where there's some distortion that comes and goes. Panning that up the center, uh, it's living in the left and right. Going to the LFE channel uh, at zero, and so that's a component of adding some low frequency to the LFE. Uh, there's a few plugins we have going on, even on the drums, it's very subtle. Uh, some multiband compression on the bottom to kind of control it. Spectre is a nice plugin we've been using uh, to sort of just like add a little bit of tonality to things. So a little bit of bottom, a little bit of top, just to kind of lift the, the tone of this. And then all these bass tracks I process with uh, my Hazel Rig VLC uh, EQs. So I got a little bit more bottom in, a little bit more size out of those. So that's the only real analog processing I did on this entire mix. Uh, we'll kind of go through some more of these guitars, uh, build this mix back together with the components we're looking at here.
So these hate rhythms. Super aggressive sounding thing. I just high pass a bit of stuff on the bottom and kind of clean them up. And then we're just getting a little bit of action with the specter, same thing. A little bit bigger on the bottom and just a little bit of aggression on the top. The one thing I'll mention too on this entire mix, uh, we don't really have a, a master EQ that we can work with in Atmos that works uh, in Pro Tools in a way that allows for me to adjust all of these objects. So I've set up a Pro Q3 EQ on each channel and I've ganged them all together. So uh, there's a master EQ group that allows me to grab any of these channels and sort of make an overall EQ. So small little incremental changes on this uh, to give the whole entire mix on the last plugin slot a little bit of lift or a little bit of cut. So uh, I can sort of make a few tweaks as I go along building this mix. There's a couple of things I needed to cut in the, the low mids uh, for the final process of this. Um, but, you know, otherwise really trying to maintain uh, consistency of what the original mix sounds like. So uh, we're going to go through a couple more guitars here. we got some movement. So uh, front to back movement on his palm muting guitar part. So uh, there's a lot of automation lanes in Atmos, and there's a couple different ways you can do automation. Uh, I'm literally taking this stereo object, moving it from the front of the room to the back of the room. So we'll have a look at this. This is the view in the renderer. And so that was only two lanes of automation. So that was fairly simple to get that movement to happen. Uh, just drew it in and kind of made the decision of how fast it should move going back. Uh, the next couple of rhythm guitars. Some riffs and some lead stuff. Same thing, not much EQ, just a couple little bits on the Spectre and some cleanup. Um, and all that stuff was baked in on the guitar tones, so uh, everything they brought me uh, was the sounds they wanted. I really wanted to maintain that, preserve all the stuff they worked super hard to get. So uh, same thing, all these guitars just have a little bit of a lift if they needed to be brought up just for some clarity and then just tighten up the bottom end, so high passing uh, most of these tracks. Um, the lead guitar, I think, in this song is one of those moments when I have people that listen in this Atmos room, uh, it's sort of an aha moment. So when it comes in, uh, the lead starts uh, closer to the front and then the effects of that sort of pop in the back and become this like really sort of elongated thing. So I'll play this right now, the dry part, which is panned 75% uh, off the front wall. So. Effectively, the dry part, there's still some delay on it, but the uh, other component of it is this. So, uh, a wet only reverb and delay, so those combined. So, we have a dry guitar and then the wet guitar, and it becomes this really big thing. So, super cool, very, uh, very much into trying to do that sort of stuff when we're in the Atmos world. couple pan delays. And some harmonies. So, trying to get those to sound as big as possible. So I'll just open up this whole section. And there's a little bit of effect that I'm adding to some things. Uh, I didn't really touch on it yet, but like I have this shimmer send here. And so uh, it's uh, severely high passed reverb uh, that's an ambient setting on a Liquid Sonics plugin. Um, we'll take a look at it down here. So, ambience setting on that to a 1.7 second decay time. So, if we crank this up. That gives us uh, just a little bit of decay, some lift on some of these parts, uh, but the uh, effect sound is, is down at negative 30. So it's really not a component of the sound. It's more just to add some depth to the space that we're working in. Uh, same thing on the snare drum. We have 
little bit of reverb with the same Liquid Sonics plug-in. So we have the London plate. Nick is a big fan of that, so we picked a few different ones we wanted to try. Uh, sort of a fairly short plate setting. Um, and then the thing that uh, I learned from a friend of ours uh, here at Sweetwater, Mike Miller, is this uh, stereo reverb um, staggering. So we have six reverbs that are creating that drum reverb. So uh, left and right, we have wide, side, rear, top front, and top rear. So uh, I have the same reverb copied. All of these plugins are actually ganged together. So any settings changes I make uh, work together. And they're pre-delayed differently, so I have no pre-delay on the front ones, on the left and right. The wides have a 32nd note, actually should be 64th note, then a 32nd note, and then a 16th note on the rear one. And then the same thing for the height one, a 64th note of pre-delay, and then a 32nd note on the back. So we end up having... Uh, trail of reverb that's pre-delayed with more length so that as something hits it it kind of goes through the the atmos space um and and adds some depth to uh the sound without it being sort of reverb everywhere we're having this thing that sort of like passes through in time so sounds really natural but also then creates uh, a lot of you know a nice decay to things so A uh, couple things here that are pretty cool. The uh, arpeggiated part that comes in here, I will play this for you. So there's a super fast arpeggiated part that picks up and slows down. So we use the Dolby Atmos Panner to get some really cool LFO stuff. So this moves around a whole bunch. Uh, I can slow it down to show you the movement, but it goes back and forth and then goes back and forth again. And so literally popped into here, drew a squiggly line, uh, and then dropped it in, and we have it at a half note repetitive thing. So when we go look at the renderer, and this is happening, you see this thing moving around really fast. And that just gives us some movement on this part that's kind of already pretty hectic. So um, I think it's a pretty cool component to it. I don't think that stuff always needs to move when we're mixing in Atmos, just placing things so that it has some space, I think is awesome. Uh, the next component to this that we moved around in this song was this sort of pluck arp thing, which is the same thing. We're just kind of making a box with the LFO in the Atmos music panner. And as you can see, just kind of circles your head, makes things sound a little bit crazy. Um, and yeah, I think there's one other component here when we get into these bridge leads. So similar thing to the other lead guitars, we have sort of an unaffected front guitar and then a rear part that's more affected, so. So in a stereo mix, that would be stacked. You wouldn't hear that as clearly, but now we can kind of have two components of the guitar that really sort of let it shine and kind of lift it up and give it some space, so. A couple sort of ethereal parts, and so a lot of the orchestration and stuff with these guys is really kind of focused on these parts coming together, the things that support it, the effects that are kind of built into it. Uh, there's a little bit of piano here, which is kind of very subtle in the mix but is a component to it. And so uh, we wanted that to be still kind of tucked in. So we didn't do a whole lot to change the balance of that. And then the whole thing about this is that we're really trying to maintain the balance they had in the stereo mix. So when we go back to this, and we're listening to the stereo down mix, we're not really losing anything, stuff's not vanishing. It's sort of staying in the same general balance. But when we open it up into the Atmos, we 
you get this really big sort of engulfing sound. So uh, that's really kind of the focus of what we were trying to do here with this stuff. So a um, couple other reverbs. The one that is going to the bed is a ambience, or this is the chamber uh, that we have um, set to go straight to the bed. So there's a couple components that are going to that. Actually, in this song, there's nothing going to that reverb. So scratch that. We have a couple things that are going to sort of a, a really massive sounding reverb that we're going to hear demonstrate for you on this. Plugin called uh, Megaverb by Gigahertz, uh, four second decay on this. Uh, same sort of situation. I don't have quite as many instances, but front, sides, rear, and top. Uh, so that's panned to the bed. So. so this is just the return. So kind of bright, adds a little bit of ambience to what's going on, but we don't have it too loud in the blend on that. So when we play the part, just gives a little bit of depth. So when we hit stop, you can hear obviously the, the decay of that. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, really just trying to maintain the balance from the stereo mix and then just give it as much space in Atmos as I possibly can. Uh, I think uh, this is sort of my favorite song off of the record. So if you get a chance to listen to it in Atmos, in an Atmos studio, on AirPod Maxes, uh, on a Dolby soundbar of any kind, uh, please check it out. Uh, any questions, please feel free to hit me up. Uh, love talking Atmos and a big fan of this. So um, yeah, I think that's about it for this song. But uh, yeah, if you got any questions or anything you want to know, hit us up in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.